Hello, facilitators, and welcome back to another video, or welcome if this is the first time you're joining me. My name is Marcy Melzer. I'm an intuitive speech pathologist and natural functional language facilitation consultant. And so I come here every week with videos for parents and caregivers of children who are not talking well yet. And we've been talking a lot on this channel about virtual autism. <clears throat> and the reason I call myself an intuitive speech pathologist is because I work with parents and caregivers with more than just tips and tricks to make your kid do something or stop doing something that you want them to do that you're concerned about. I want to help you find out why these things are happening, why you're concerned about it, why it's affecting your life so much, the behaviors your child is using and what's going on around you. And that is your mindset because this problem is not unique. This is happening with families across the planet in every culture, in every country, in every socioeconomic as long as there are phones and videos available to children, there are late talkers because parents are using these devices in ways that they are replacing parenting. So um, I'm here to help you make changes. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. What are you afraid of? And I know this isn't one that's going to be flocking people over. This is going to be one of those videos that attracts the people who need it. And those are parents that are stuck, feeling very stuck. Or maybe you're just in your own evolution. You were feeling very stuck. Now you realize that you have a lot more influence and responsibility than you ever understood before. And now you want to know what to do. Maybe you're working through that process right now. Like I said, this is going to be one of the most popular videos on my channel, but this is one of the most important because if you are stuck in fear, you can't take action. So let's get into talking about what I'm going to be talking about today. And that is what are you afraid of? Okay. Because remember, it is fear that keeps you from doing what you need to do. And for those of you who are just joining me or haven't already, my Get Started Guide is the free way for you to introduce yourself. Because remember, on my channel, not only do you make investment of your time and energy to watch my really long videos, they're longer than every, everybody else because I really dig into things like your mindset and why these things are happening. Because unless you understand the why, you're not going to make changes. You're just going to do changes out of these fear-based things. And we're going to talk about that. So if you want to know how to get started and prove to yourself how powerful you are, that's in my Get Started Guide. And if you are interested in the topic of mindset, there are is a whole playlist of videos on my YouTube channel. Just go to the keyword mindset and you can see many, many videos about mindset. So we are going to be talking about that today and yeah, let's get into what are you afraid of? Because remember, if you were afraid, you're not going to be taking the actions you need. And so we want to dig into it. And this is what we're going to be talking about on today's video. I'm going to be sharing with you seven fear habits that can shut down your process and your progress. So that's what happens is you get stuck in these habits because you get triggered. And I'm going to talk about how that happens. And then I'm going to share with you five signs that you are stuck in worry and it is based on your own behavior because remember this, nobody's judging i'm just helping you find yourself out of this stuck place and i'm going to give you five survival strategies if you are stuck in that place and i've got five action steps for parents who are ready to be done with fear and facilitate functional process pro process and progress so that's what we're going to be talking about and I know that this is happening. I know that parents are stuck in fear because every day parents of late talkers can and are triggered into fear-based mindset. And that's by things like even watching your own child's behavior, you can get triggered into fear. What you read on the internet, 
the propaganda of acceptance and awareness and all those things and how these um, diseases and disorders and labels are a good thing to have and the fake news and propaganda about it and even whispers and, and gossip and things that are happening from other people, not to mention red flag checklists that are triggering you. So I know that fear is out there and I know these things are doing it and here they are as a result of those things, right? So judgment happens by others and or yourself that you are failing. And these fear triggers are distracting you as a result of these things that are going on outside of your control and even in your control, you are distracted by these things. Judgment by others or yourself. Insecurity and doubt in your ability to help your child. My child's to this. They've got this disorder. I can't do it. I need, a, you know, experts. And that's what happens is dependence. You move into dependence on experts, therapies, diets, supplements, you know, because you don't feel like you can do it. You have to get other things. And then there's disappointment because when you give away your goals and expectations and all those things to other people, they're going to be unmet because nobody's going to do this as well as you are. Nobody's going to do it in the way that you want. You can't make those therapists be like you and you're going to be disappointed if you expect those things because these are fear triggers. This happens to everyone. If it's not one or more, it's you've been through this. There's self-blame over poor return on your investments. You can blame yourself over giving your kids video. You can blame them over taking them, leaving them with babysitters that didn't talk to them, whatever. You didn't get the outcome you wanted. You could be stuck in guilt or shame due to those previous decisions and time. So now you're blaming yourself and now you're feeling guilty about those things. And you could be stuck in worry. Oh no, I wasted all this time. My child's already X years old. They're never going to be normal. These are the fear triggers that are distracting you into habits that are keeping you stuck. So if you've been going through any of those things and you start to take action based on those fear-based activities, right? When people judge you, you act on the judgment. When they do that stuff, so when you do it, that's what happens. You end up spending all your money, money you don't have, and then worrying because you spent money on things, therapies, experts, whatever, that you didn't get return on investment, and now you can't pay your bills or whatever because you spent your money. This is what happens. And then it, it creates relationship problems with your partners. They beg you to stop being obsessive about these things. And you're like, no, I know what I'm doing. Or you yourself are just so feeling so bad about what you've done in fear, guilt, blame, shame, all those things that are going on, right? Then that's what happens. Here they are, the habits that are blocking your progress. And, and if you're stuck in one of these habits, then you're really going to find yourself in, you know, a really tough spot to get out of. And this is what this video is all about. And insecurity and self-doubt, right? If you believe these judgmental ideas that other people are saying to you, then that's going to leave you in insecurity. And that's the habit, right? Remember, these are the actions that happen. Somebody says judgmental stuff, you believe it. You give your power away to experts, they take it from you, and now you're depending on them to get the progress that you want to see. And remember, these all come from that frustration and stuff. Now, unrealistic expectations, prayer, quick fixes, I'm just going to do the Nemechek protocol, and I'm just going to stop the video time, and, and it's going to come back. Like These are errors in judgment based on unrealistic expectations. And these are habits that come from promises. Yeah, just give it to me. I'll fix your kid. Just let him take this thing. Remember, you could even be getting this temptation from people trying to sell you stuff, right? And then you've got the blame game. So maybe you did make investments in things or you did have unrealistic expectations and then you figured it out. Or maybe you didn't figure it out and you're just blaming these therapists. They're doing it wrong. They don't know how to do it. They aren't skilled. They're, you know, you're blaming other people or you could be angry or you, you know, even comparing this therapist is better than this therapist. If you've gone through five or six therapists, right, you're still stuck in these fear habits because you're not realizing that you are better than anything. And then the guilt and shame happens. It, every parent goes through it when you realize 
your responsibility. You're the one that gave your kids the phone. You're the one that can't spend time. You're just going to have to change and get out of the comfort zones you created. But you don't you can't do that if you're stuck in guilt and shame. And then it progresses into worry and desperation. Now you're depressed and victimized and failing. And now you can't take any action because you're finding yourself unable to do things. And that leaves you in fear, which is fight, flight or freeze. And so those fear habits you know, you could have moved through them. No, I don't do that anymore. I'm not, I'm, I'm not giving it away to therapists. I'm going to make my kid do it myself. And then you turned into a therapist, right? That's not a difference. It's not an improvement. It's still a fear-based action. So you really have to think about those couple of slides I gave you. Where is your fear coming from? So, you know, I think that's it. Farisha, look at you just joined on. I just hopped on here and I have to say literally two days ago, I let go, let go of the delays my kid has and stop feeling stressed, guilty for the way my three-year-old is getting looked at in school and how there's more things coming because you're realizing that your mindset about this could be stopping you from taking the actions you have. And let's talk about how that's coming more because this is a really important thing, right? She doesn't want others look at this child, have, have her such positive feedback from the school. If she's not getting positive feedback, if your child's not getting positive feedback from other people, that's affecting you and your child, right? Nobody wants their kid to be looked down on or judged by other people. You are feeling this judgment. You are feeling the same feelings as your child, and your child is feeling the same feelings that you are depression and worry and fear and shame and blame and all these things, right? That's what's really, really important. And what happens when you're not getting positive feedback, right? Even to yourself because you're stuck in fear-based feedback. Those are the fear-based triggers that I talked about. And so, yeah, I know those of you that are watching me live, right? We don't want to be stuck in this sad business like my, she understands that all of this is feeding off of fear. The therapists are afraid. The schools are afraid by so many late talkers coming in. They don't know what to do with them. The therapists, the speech therapists have 60, 70 kids on their caseload. They can't help the kids. They're feeling the pressure from the parents who are blaming them. You're the expert. Make my kid a talk. How come progress isn't happening faster? Why do I have to wait on these waiting lists? There's all this stuff going on because everybody's afraid that they're not going to be. So, oh, I see. She said she got positive feedback from the school because you decided to let go and let them do their thing with what they're doing with their child, right? You have to, if you're in, if you're trying to control your child's developmental experience, you're always going to suffer. Let's get into why this happens, right? These fear habits where you start blaming people, even your child's illness. Yeah, they have autism. They got the diagnosis. They can't have it. All of these habits. This is what's going to block your progress. It's going to block your process, and then it's going to block your process. Because parents do feel pressure to give away your powerful action based on fear-based messages. So remember, even if you do, like for Sheeta, if, you're, if you found a great school for your child, but they are your child, right? Worrying isn't what you got to do. There is something that you have to do instead. And I've got ideas for you, for Sheeta, just so you can replace this feeling of pressure to give away, right? Because this is what happens. This is how this cycle happens and you end up feeling stuck. So judgment results in suffering because it causes people to feel insecurity and self-doubt, okay? When, you, when judgment is thrown at you, projected onto you, it is intended to make you self-doubt because that judgment says you're not good enough you need to change and then you that self-doubt comes into well if i can't change myself i have to pay someone or get someone or enlist someone to do this for me because that judgment says i'm bad i'll never be good right that you just fall into these this fear and then the dependence goes into unmet expectations because nobody can do it as well as you. Nobody will do it as well as you. That's what happened to Farshida. She got into unmet expectations of the school because she was kept trying to change them to be different with her kid. And then she let go. And now he's happy there. So I think it matters a lot that, you know, you're 
if you get rid of unmet, unmet expectations, when you think about all these things, you can give them up insecurity, dependence. It's just that you're triggered by these things, this fear based stuff. Whenever you feel disappointment, even in yourself, you start to blame. So maybe you did have unrealistic expectations and now you see that your child is doing better and you still blame yourself for wasted time or whatever. And now maybe you even, so this is the other thing, whenever you are independent and someone else gets a better result than you do, now you feel more guilty. I should have done it sooner. I'm really bad at this. I can't do it even nearly as good as they are. So now I need to mortgage my house to pay them more time. And then you give away. No, they're better than me. That's the, this idea that you feel when someone else gets a better result. Because remember, you're still holding on to those expectations. I want my kids to talk on command. I want them to answer questions. Oh, yeah, it's all the ticks. And they need to respond to their name, make eye contact, you know, respond to their name from across the room. Because remember, these are the qualifiers for regular school. Can they follow multi-step directions? Can they sit and listen to a story in a group? Will they stay in the room? Can they follow rules? Do they understand boundaries? You know, can they share stories and information if they get hurt? Are they self-sufficient, right? Remember, if you're trying to tick those boxes by making your kid perform that way based on skills and activities. Look, I'm going to make him follow the rules by hand over hand, you know, whatever you're doing. Remember, that's where you're stuck in. How is the developmental experience going to get your child there independently without you or someone else having to make them do those things by court forcing yeah that's the whole ideas right so that's it so she says thank you my child is doing so much progress when i don't pay attention or think about the delays she has right because when you're not thinking about the delays she has or the problems you have because she's to this and I can't this because she's to that, right? It's all whatever those vague words are happening in your mind. It's different for every mom. You feel a different way about your child. But as soon as you start looking at their abilities, there's the things they can do, the bright little light that shines out of them. And the things when they're funny, when they're witty, when they do something better than you, right? You know, whatever that is. That's when you can dig into your facilitation because then you're not worried about what they can't do and you're not trying to make them do those things so that they can pass somebody else's test. They'll pass other people's tests when you show them how to be functional with a capital F-U-N and enjoy and explore and learn from every new place they go. I know a lot of parents are sending me notes about the social aspect, like they can play with their parents at home and they're doing things at home, but they can't go out in the world. And that's because you're still prompting and testing them at home. They're just good. They've learned your game. They've learned your rules. They've learned your strategies and they've learned how to perform to get the goods. Even if the goods are good job, you said this, if you've got a book with 50 animals on a page and you're proud of the fact that you're able to say where's the platypus where's the zebra where's the you know kangaroo and your child can find all these animals but they aren't having social skills that means you need to put that book away and start watching videos to learn how to be more functional with your child just like maya did and maya says that her three-year-old loves watching me when she watches the videos because kids like the way i talk explain things over and over in multiple ways and even though i'm talking super fast on these videos and explaining things with grown-up words with a lot of details even three-year-olds understand because i'm talking about them and their life and their situation right they're relating they're they're happy these children are happy that you're watching my videos because you're learning a better way to interact with them you're learning how to change and get into new habits and that's what i want to help you do today so remember you're gonna unaddressed fears lead you into ultimately fear that keeps you debilitated where you can't do anything you can't fight fight or flee your child is having meltdowns and you're having meltdowns right alongside them and everybody's been there look there is no judgment here everybody has been through this process 
I talked about these triggers, these fear-based triggers are coming at you on purpose by people trying to sell you things. They're trying to sell you therapies and supplements and brain zappers and this and that and this and that, right? So just listen to what they say. And if they are authentic enough that you could play it in the room and your child would relate to what they're saying, then you should consider it, right? Because now you're not focused on, oh no, my child's got an impairment and I got to get this thing to fix them because they're broken. Because they are they got red flag checklist, that means they're broken and I need to fix, they're not broken, they're just underdeveloped, right? They made those checklists to scare you. They, because early intervention and early stuff, that makes it easier for the school. If they can get their hands on your child before you put them on five or six hours of video a day, right? Let, like happened during the pandemic or it happens now at home daycares or places where you don't have somebody who's engaging with your child all the time. They don't want that to happen to your child. They want to get a therapist in your house teaching you what to do with your child, hopefully, so that you know what to do instead. Parents are giving their kids their phone because they don't know how to play themselves, okay? And so this is what you got to do. You got to get back with your child and play. So let's talk about these five signs that you are stuck. So uh, hopefully Rashida figured it out and hopefully you are figuring it out too, but you might have one or more of these things still going on. That means you're still in a little bit denial that you are acting out of fear and not out of empowerment. And I wanna help you switch that. So check this screen to see if you are doing any of these things. Are you exhausted? Because you'll be exhausted from doing natural facilitation, but you'll also be happy because you'll be seeing progress, functional progress. If you are exhausted and your child's not seeing it, then you're going to um, then you're going to see. Now, your child's behaviors are more challenging, right? They're not getting where you understand what they're doing. They're getting more manipulative. They're getting more sneaky. They're trying to manipulate you and control you, and that happens when you try to control them. So this is a sign that you're acting out of fear. Behaviors are more challenging, and you don't know what to do about them. That means you're looking at this from the wrong angle, stuck in worry. Number three, you spend two plus hours a day, even after your child go, goes to sleep, researching their symptoms. Miss Maya is doing it right now. How to recognize virtual autism. You don't need to worry about this. Don't focus on what your child has wrong with them, Miss Maya. Focus on how to get realistic expectations. How to measure realistic expectations comes when you get your workbook. And I'll talk about that and how to do it. But remember, if you're stuck in any of these things, remember your child is still sneaky, that means you haven't figured it out. You haven't figured out how to prove to them, right? And so, yeah, for she to figure it out, I've decided to prove to the school and the therapist that my three-year-old is capable of learning sitting and focusing just like any other kid. And that's what I suggest to parents, right? And this is what I'm suggesting to you right now. But remember, you're not going to get there if you're stuck in this worry. So look at this. If you're spending two hours a day researching, is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Is it this? Right? Then you're stuck in worry and fear and you need to, I'll show you. And then you're experiencing increase in judgment. Other people are judging you and you are self-judging yourself more. It's happening that you, it's cycling itself. The fear is coming back because the judgment is coming back. Remember, I showed you how that cycle works. It starts with judgment and it moves to immobility. I can't do anything. My kid's to this and I'm to that. We are stuck. And number five, you feel desperate to see real improvement. I won't sleep. You're losing sleep. You're not eating. You're calling. You're spending all night Googling. You're binge watching my videos. You're buying every supplement and thing you can get. You're reading all the books. You're binging the channels. You're going to the sites, right? This is the problem. This is the problem. That means that you are stuck, okay? So now, if you are stuck, I've got five ways to help you get out. So you could be firmly stuck like Ms. Maya here, or you could be like Rashida, who's on her way out, who's figured out how to prove it. I've got some five strategies for those two, but we're going to get here. And Haley's right, the mindset. This is the biggest hurdle, the biggest blockage I had to come, overcome before I saw any results. And it took Haley a long time <laughs> to figure it out because she was really stuck in worry, right? If you've had a child who's had a lot of ear infections and things like that, I saw somebody else here on the video 
that said, yeah, ear tubes. That's Miss Maya. First set at 2.5 and he just turned four and you're still at the same stage and he has virtually autism. So you're Miss Maya, you've got a double whammy, just like Haley did. Not only did your child have ear infections that kept them unable to hear, but you also had this virtual autism situation. So the behaviors look very unusual. The communication is very convoluted and inconsistent. And it, it, it's very hard to figure out with these standardized checklists. And that's why kids like Haley's son were, and Haley herself was like, I'm not sure it's autism because we have all these other physical symptoms. There's all that stuff going on. And literally you need to get past it. You need to take that diagnosis label. As long as your child is healthy enough to play. If they're eating, it doesn't matter if they're eating everything, they're eating enough to keep them healthy and out there and playing and enjoying life with you. And you can take them on a walk. You can take them on a car ride. You can help them play things and do things with them. They're healthy enough for that. Then stop worrying. Take that diagnosis, put it up on a shelf, leave it there for six months. You might have to wait on a waiting list that long anyway. And just Start to focus on your child's ability. Just like Rashida said, you have to prove it to these people. It's no, it's not going to happen. They can't do it. You have the time, the energy, and the exposure to do it. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how. Because we need you to do this. We need you to get out of these desperation. He's got to make improvement or I won't sleep, right? It's not going to work that way. It's going to only work. It's only going to work. So here we go. Rashida says, I believe in our kids and I do too. And I know you do too. So let's believe in these kids and make little changes ourselves to equip and empower them. Number one, survival strategy. If you are worried, slow down, slow down your breathing, slow down your speech, slow down the actions you take with your hands, because these things all affect your own personal feelings of regulation in your central nervous system and in your ability to problem solve so without it you're here asking me questions it's very hard i can't do it my child's sneaky i can't do it help me figure it out just step one is slow down slow down because when you just take a minute you will see how brilliant your child is stop worrying about what they can't do and start looking at them and spending time with them and then spend a little time with yourself. Okay. Because the source of your fear is different and it's definitely happening. If you're here making comments on my videos, I know we've all been in it and you're triggered by the outside world and you can't help it. So you need to figure out what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this energy, this judgment, this blame, this shame, all this stuff that you are feeling because the source of your fear habits could be one big trigger. You know, maybe you found out when you took your child to the birthday party and they were the one that was having a tantrum or covering their ears while their other kids are singing happy birthday. Or maybe it was, you know, the end of the year and or some program at school or something and your kid's the one that couldn't do it. And all the other kids are talking and chatting and interacting. Or maybe other kids in your kid's class come up to you and say, hi, you're Joey's mom, blah, blah, blah. But your child is silent, right? It could be one of those events or a neighbor or a mother-in-law visit from somebody that just made you think that you are completely useless as a parent that your child is delayed, that you gave them the phone and now they're this and it might never improve. Like that's the stuff that can make you feel like this. Like uh, what is going on? What are these people doing? Well, how can we do this? And, and, and you lose belief in yourself and stuff. So you need to get that belief back. This is what self-awareness does, right? It, what are these people doing to you? And is it even true what they're saying? Has it been one thing or has it been the thing to wear you down over time? And you got to put that up on the shelf with the diagnosis. You got to get rid of it. Okay, now here's survival strategy number three. You got to take a time out. You've got to get a break from this child. You have to find someone who loves your child and trust that they will help 
keep your child happy and safe. They're not going to give your child a phone. It could be a grandma. It could be a neighbor. It could be your buddy. It could be your partner. It could be whoever. And then you need to take that time and focus on your recovery from trauma and care for your own happiness because this fear that was projected at you, the misdiagnosis, the labels, the judgment, all that stuff that comes at you, that's trauma. There's some moms that could have PTSD. Like again, for Sheeta figured it out, she was making herself miserable and suffer because she was stuck in that stuff. She just said it, you know? And when she changed, now she's a happier human. She's not suffering when she looks at her child using whatever behavior communication the child is using. She gets inquisitive. She digs in. She figures out how to bring that feeling to light with language, good, bad, frustrated, excited, happy, curious, whatever it is. Because this is what parents can do when you are a connected facilitator for your child. Without that ability, you yourself fall into the judgment, fear, blame, and shame, right? That you're projecting onto your child. And when it comes onto you and you feel it and you project it onto your child, this is when you end up having tantrums parallel. Your child's crying and you're crying too. Or you leave the room because you're crying in your car or crying in your bathroom or something like that, right? Because you don't want to see your child. No, they won control over you. Just like these other people, your mother-in-law or whoever it was that made you think you weren't capable. Even a school, right? This is traumatic for you as parents. And I, you need to give it up. You need to really process this out and find out that it was just somebody else's stuff that was projected onto you. And you don't need it, and neither does your child. So it's time to put it away with the diagnosis, with the judgment, because every diagnosis is a judgment, analysis, this kind of stuff. You want to figure out and move from diagnosis and judgment into analysis and curiosity about who your child really is as a human being how they really feel about that birthday party or the show or the story time or whatever it was you took them to because you thought it was going to be a good experience and it didn't turn out to be a good experience because you weren't prepared. You didn't facilitate it. You just thought on your own something that might be better for your child. And this is what the schools are doing to you. They think they know what's better for your child, your life, whatever, because they have experience working, whatever. And it might be true. It might be true, but you're not going to know unless you approach that with an understanding and analysis. OK, so let's get into it. I know I've been talking about this a lot. I thought that this was going to be shorter, but it really is. So you literally take a break, take a break. Right. And, and, and take care of yourself. And then you go back and you make a change. You've got to get this kiddo to buy into your functional facilitation amazing ideas that are fun and that's up to you and so you pick one little thing that will prevent future triggers maybe you can't stand the fact that after kids go to school ever after they leave the room or go to bed or go to school or whatever you're cleaning up after them so make a new rule that protects your boundaries so that they're participating in cleaning and so that you're creating win-win contracts and this is just one example of the kinds of changes that you can make. You can learn about them all over in my, in my program. So yeah, one little change. Now we're gonna do this together. Now I'm gonna help you. And then number five is to find your gratitude. That's what Frashida had to do, right? She had to realize all the amazing, beautiful things about her child and not believe what other people are saying that you can't do this stuff. You have to decide to be the joyful energy and not the projected, judgmental, oh no, woe is us, it's never gonna happen, it's too slow, he, does he have virtual autism, does he not, blah, 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 right? <clears throat> None of that's gonna help you, but gratitude will. Gratitude is what makes you feel happy every day, no matter how much your child is talking, because you love them, right? This is your baby. Now, if you need help with all this, that's how you visit wavesofcommunication.com. Check out these buttons. All these buttons take you to some place that could be directly for you to solve your problem with this lay talker. 
the free guide, parent self resources, virtual autism, my community, and you can even work with me personally. Each one of these pages explains exactly how it works, exactly how I help people. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for liking this video right now. Please hit that like button and all the birthday greetings I got. This was my um, <clears throat> 58th birthday. Happy to share. I'm really heading into my uh, Saturn return years, my crone years, my I'm an expert. Listen, I've been doing this a really long time. And I know that what's been going on in the systems is breaking down. And after 30 plus years, 35 years now in the system, working in the system, I've learned how it works, how it doesn't, what parents need, what parents don't need. <clears throat> and it all depends on everybody's unique situation. And that's why so many of the suggestions I give are very general, and I need you to dig into your own work and your own self, your own previous experiences, your own childhood trauma, your own adult trauma, all of those things, because you bring that stuff with you to your parenting experience, and you are the best, right? You are the first and the best facilitator your child will ever have. You have the time and energy and love to get them going. So that's how this works. So thank you again for all of that. And I'm grateful for all the birthday wishes too. So now if you're ready to be done. So, you know, Miss Maya, I really want you to be ready to be done. She said her son just started pre-K and he loves going to school and has no tantrums. That's amazing. But you have to do at home. You cannot give it away just because he loves school. It's amazing he loves school, but you have to decide at home that you can do this. And it's not gonna happen very fast if you give it away, even if your child's going to school every day. So I've got five action steps for parents who are ready for progress. And action one is get my workbook because the workbook helps you understand where you're stuck. It understands what you need to do to move forward. And it understands when you get stuck in your next comfort zone and you've got to push forward to get to the next level. So the workbook in the description of this video, you can find it on Amazon Worldwide. If you're having trouble with it, let me know. If you live in obscure places, I can find a way to get it for you. Because without the workbook, parents don't stay consistent. And in the first step of the process is the profile pages in the workbook. You have to investigate your family's current priorities. Only you can identify the most important topics that your child wants you to start teaching them now. And when you identify what they want you to teach them now, they will learn 150%, okay? And that's it, that's it. So now the next thing that you're gonna do after you investigate your family's current priorities, you're going to learn what they're happy about, what they're struggling through, all that stuff. Because remember, we don't just talk about things we love. We talk about everything. And the next one is to get trained. So if you don't know what to do and you're happy your child is making improvement at school, but you don't even know what they're doing at school to help your child, and maybe what they're doing at school is not capable for you to do at home, you know, you need to learn new ways to run your own household like a facilitator before school, after school, before work, after work, all of that. And if your child is home with you the whole time, now you're the one who is the school, who is the training platform program that helps to help your child get school ready, all the preschool training stuff. And you must learn new strategies and practice them consistency for a better, consistently for a better result because your child will start talking. Let me explain this. As soon as you stop prompting and controlling your child's developmental experience and you start talking to them more, just like Rashida did, your child's going to change. You're going to see remarkable change. Eye contact, responding. They're going to pay attention to you and stay by you and listen to you and want you to learn. They're going to bring you things to teach them now where it, you know, currently they may be avoiding you. All right. So remember, when you make the change, your child's going to change and it's going to be better than you expected, faster than you expected if you do it right. Because remember, you're just re facilitating reconnection. You've always been capable of doing this. You just have been out of the habits. You've been in fear habits instead of facilitation habits. And so now that you've learned these habits I just told you about, that we're going to be talking about how you're going to move forward and you get into these new habits and you do them every day in your workbook, plan it, 
execute it, get them done every day, then you're going to see improvement. But it doesn't stop in the first few weeks, right? You know, in three weeks or six weeks, three to six weeks is typical progress where you see a significant change where you're like, no, I know for sure it's not autism now because there's no way kids with autism do that. No kids with autism figure that out. No kids with autism are conscious and social and caring about other people because in this process, you learn how to reconnect and see things from your child's perspective before you ask them to do it. You learn to train them to connect with you for the entire execution of your life, not just them get ready. You know, you get the bath time ready and call them over and have them come for bath time, right? Remember, you're facilitating independence across all levels with this and it, they will change, but you always have to be ahead of them. That's what this is about. If you don't run your household like a facilitator that is facilitating 100%, 1% improvement every day to get to 100% of a job, you'll quit jobs halfway through and then you won't stay consistent. So you have to get training. The workbook, the work, uh, the workshop, that can train you or you can work with me. Now, here's the next one. You have to introduce a new idea, method, or tool that will make one job better and more functional experience. So this little girl, just because she gets to wear the big gloves and use the spray bottle, is having a blast while she cleans. Now, is this cleaning experience, you know, the same way you would use gloves and a towel? No. They've made it more functional. These are the functional things we use. Now we're going to enjoy it. We're going to play a little bit. We're going to spray in a happy face shape before we wipe it off. You know, those kinds of things that are going to happen. What else can we clean? What else can we clean? What else can we clean? Ooh, it went from dingy to shiny and you did it. Woohoo! That's functional stuff. And now the house is getting cleaned. And just because you brought out the big gloves and the spray bottle, now you've equipped and empowered your child to do chores, right? And have fun. And the whole time you're talking about how you're squirting the water and it's spraying on the window and you're wiping it off and, and how it was streaky and you have to use this towel versus this towel or this spray versus this spray and how we can't spray this thing, but we can spray that thing. The whole process of doing it properly, right? Is how you move into, because remember, we're not we're talking about an impaired kid that we're trying to get to do the basic basics, right? We're presenting comprehensive functional activities in the proper way with not expectation on day one for perfection, but if you facilitate it by day 100 with 100 exposures to this functional activity, your child will improve. Right. And that's how this works. That's how all this works. So you introducing a new idea, one that will make the job better and more functional. That's going to prove to your child and prove to you that you've got good ideas, that you know cool things to teach them and that you are the source and not their phone or anybody else, that you are better than them. You have to prove it. And that's what that last tip was. Now, this one you're going to create a plan that helps you be super consistent. And that's where your itinerary and your focus topics come in. So you're going to facilitate at least two activities in the same way every day for at least two weeks. And these are not extra teaching things. These are two things that you already do every day. Do you already eat breakfast? Do you already brush your teeth? You already co-sleep and wake up and get dressed. You already cook food. You already commute to places. You already go out and, and visit. You already play. You already go to the park. So these are things you already do. Two of them you're going to laser focus in and do in a better way using a new thing. And you're going to be consistent with that activity for two weeks, two of them, two times a day. One could be meal time, One could be bath time. One could be commute time. One could be dressing time. You pick it because you're going to use those profile pages, your own, and you're going to find the things that you really need to fix right now. Like it drives me crazy. Getting dressing time in the morning takes five hours. You know, and it should only take 20 minutes. That's a good thing to start with. 
it's inefficient. It's not structured. It's not a way that your child understands this is what I got to do. There's a lot of game playing manipulation going on. If your task, whatever it is, getting meal time in, getting dressed, getting bath time done is taking two hours and creating a colossal mess that you've got to clean up at the end of the day. These are good things to start with. Because you need them to change. You can't sustain those habits in those old ways for a really long time. And if you pick two of them and you just focus on those two activities and then the other two your child will bring to you, they'll bring you things to teach them because they'll be so in the mindset of, oh, my mom knows how to teach me how to get better at bath time. She probably already knows how to teach me how to get better at something else I want to do, like riding my bike or playing with water or drawing or whatever. So I'm going to bring that thing to my mom and see if she can teach me that, too. This is what will happen when you prove to your child, because your mindset is now as a facilitator and not a controlling manipulator who's going to make your child do the things so that you can test them, right? You're not teaching them to the test. You're teaching them about life. And that's how this works, okay? So you're going to be super consistent with these two activities every single day for two weeks, seven days a week. Pick things you already do in those days. And number five is then you have to analyze your current mindset and your connection, which is your child's mindset. How do they feel about your facilitation? That's what the connection evaluation chart does. There's seven levels. Your child won't learn unless they're connected with you. They will learn better and faster when they are super connected with you and the idea you're presenting so that, because remember, they move through their process of learning to the point where I don't even know what this is to, I like this so much that I want everybody around me to also know this information, right? And that's how language works. Your knowledge base, you want to share it. You get motivated and exciting and equipped and empowered. I know everything about this thing and I want to teach everyone. This is what happens when kids get into obsessions, especially with their phone. I know everything about it. I want to find baby shark in five languages, you know, that kind of thing. Or if you take them off the phone, maybe you're in the virtual autism phase that you've taken them away from the phone. And now you're introducing them to things and now they're stuck on buildings or they're stuck on trains, or this is what happened before we had videos. Kids dig into it on purpose. A thing they learn full on, 150%, practice it 24-7 until they get good at it, and then they put it aside and pick up something new. This is how the child brain works. They're not going to stay with even their foods. Think about their preferences for foods. They could want to eat nothing but macaroni and cheese with ketchup on it, and it took you a month to figure out that they wanted ketchup on their macaroni and cheese when you don't ever do that. And then that's what they want. And they're so happy. You give it to them for three days in a row. Now, day four, they don't want it anymore. It took them three weeks to get you to figure out the, to put that ketchup on the macaroni and cheese. Maybe not three weeks, but at least three days to figure it out. Then they do it for three days and they quit. Because remember, you're paying attention and you're like, oh, you want to do this. You want this. Now you want this. And they're like, no, I don't want this. Now you're assuming again. You're still not connected because every day you don't want to eat the same food. Your child's trying to figure out, oh, yeah, it's good to eat different things every day. They don't know this. <laughs> All they know is what they know and you're facilitating it. So remember, that's what those profile pages are about. You're going to find out what are the struggles you need to address right now because that's where you're going to get your child to pay attention. They are experiencing the same struggles. They don't want to have a two-hour bath time unless they're doing it on purpose because that's the only time they get you to connect with them, right? Because otherwise you're working and putting them on the phone. I mean, I'm telling you, they learn how to manipulate you if you've been manipulating them. Like, yeah, this Miss Maya says her child's sneaky, so that's how it goes. So Rashida says, hi, I'm so scared for my three-year-old to start school. I'm trying to find the right resources. She's so ready to learn then you'll be fine. If she's ready to learn, just go and interview the school, right? If you're scared, there's this fear-based stuff. So every time, think about what you say to yourself. I'm scared. I'm scared my child's going to do this. I'm scared they're going to judge me. I'm scared they're going to whatever. And what does it do? It makes you second guess yourself. 
doubt yourself, have expectations that are unrealistic, that are building in your head because you haven't tried it yet, right? So that's it. It's really, really important. She says, thank you for this. I'm going to open the workbook today and start. And see, that's the other thing. A lot of you bought the workbook out of fear because you're like, I need this workbook, but you didn't even follow through it because your other fear-based stuff gets you in head. I'm telling you, the mindset is huge. Mindset is everything. And unless you're analyzing where your mindset is, as well as where your connection is, because you can think, I'm feeling great about this. My kid's doing this and this and this, but you see that they're actually escaping from you, like this level three over here, right? That's below the line. If you can make them do things, but you've got to bribe them or hold them down or make them do things or shame them or judge them, you know, whatever to get them to perform, then you're making a mistake. Now, listen. You can learn all about what I do. I mean, I want, I have made it so easy for parents to learn about this. And like I said, there are 800 videos on YouTube. You can access them in my membership. That's the least expensive way to do it. And you want to type your keywords in, just go to waves of communication. You'll know it's me because of this big yellow, um, this big yellow logo with the mom and the child, the parent and the child. And then you'll see here, where you can type your keyword. This is on a laptop computer, you know, so you can actually see that desktop thing. You type your keyword in here and then you'll find playlists full of what you're looking for or many videos of what you're looking for. And if you don't want to watch the videos and you want to be able to ask me questions anytime and you want to see all of the example videos, that's the Functional Facilitation Academy. These are videos where I show you how to use your meal time, your puzzles, your books, your little characters that you've got laying around that are in the bottom of your toy box. Those are the three that are up so far. Books, toys, and books, little characters, and puzzles. Those three are up already, and there's new ones coming up every week in the Functional Facilitation Academy where you can watch me explain to you how you're going to be able to change those activities and turn them into functional experiences where your child's going to start learning. And as your child starts learning, you're going to stay ahead of them using the workbook and then get it going. Now, this book, this is Natural Facilitation. My e-guide is, it comes from my facilitation cards. I've got them here. Um, I'm also thinking about doing another run of these because I just have like one or two left. And these are my cards that show common messages from lay talkers that parents often miss and or don't know what to do with. So like this one says, am I bothering you? Because they're bothering you on purpose, right? This one says, give me details because you're giving them directions, but no whys, no hows, no um, explanations of, for the things that they're feeling that they don't understand. That's why they would think and show you with their behavior what these are. Let's talk about my friends. This one is how you'll they uh, are missing Bluey or Papa Pig or you know they because they're remembering them. Just because you took those those characters away from their experience, it doesn't mean that they don't want to talk about them. That they didn't learn important things from them, and they were important characters in their life. So. There are ways that you can bring these things back in and those that's this tool, the facilitation guide. And each one of these images, and look, I am trying, right? Remember, they are, they need you to be their cheerleader. They want to, you to teach them because nobody else is. That's this whole point. Parents are the best because you're the only ones that know what they need okay the only ones that know what they need and listen you can watch all these videos free for three days and see if they're gonna meet your needs if this is the kind of thing and you can ask questions anytime it's a free trial so that's functional facilitation q a support community it's 65 dollars a month you can ask me as many questions as you want right because i don't want you to be stuck in your fear i want you to be equipped and empowered to realize 
that you were stuck in fear, that it was projected onto you by other people or even your own mindset or your own childhood trauma, how you were parented. I mean, there's lots of things that go into the mindset of a parent, especially when you are presented by God with a beautiful child that has some delays, right? Now, what do I do? This isn't the normal parent experience. Well, God gave you this child for a reason. It's to help you with your mindset. And I posit to say that your experience of working through your trauma, the ones that maybe are hiding in your heart and your feeling in the back of your mind that you suppressed and put down there, could be coming out these days with all the triggers that are happening from projected outside things, people trying to sell you stuff, people trying to judge you, people trying to change you. And these people are just in their own fear and worry. Your mother-in-law is concerned for her grandchild. Your sister is concerned because she sees you exhausted and suffering through your child's delays and not knowing what to do. So they're just all trying to help you. But remember, nobody can help you more than yourself. When it comes to mindset, nobody can make you do anything. I'm not making you buy my stuff or whatever. I'm just offering you the opportunity to learn what you need, to know so that you can feel confident when you work with your child. And that's all that's needed because your child is waiting for you to teach them what they need and be confident about it, be consistent about it and be direct about it and be focused about it and know what you're doing, right? Because they need you to know what you're doing so that you can teach them. That's why they keep bringing you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to teach them. And I don't want you to feel afraid to engage and do it because you're stuck in fear-based habits. OK, and you can get out of them and you can move forward. And I want to help you. So visit wavesofcommunication.com if you want to know. And thank you for everybody who's um, who's joined me today to share your things. Miss Maya and Haley and Frashida, thank you so much for joining me on this live video. You ladies being vulnerable and sharing your personal experiences with your late talkers. I know you're not alone. I know there's other parents that are fighting with schools that you know, maybe the school knows better, maybe not, but you're stuck in your fear that you haven't figured it out. Maybe you're, you're at home and you don't know what to do with your child. And so you're giving them video anyway because you just haven't figured out what else to do. Maybe you want to make a change. And this is what I'm hoping I find most of you that are watching me or stayed with this to the end of the video. Maybe you really want to make a change. Maybe you really want to learn what you can do, but it feels so hard to get out of your comfort zone. I don't think I can do it. I've tried everything. I just need somebody to know what to do. I'm an expert in this. I've helped thousands of parents all over the world figure it out, and I want to help you too. It starts with your mindset and then the action you take that's based on empowered knowledge about your child and about natural development of language. You need to learn how it works so that you can facilitate it properly and stop yourself from falling back into those therapizing, controlling, prompting habits that do get your kid performing, but it doesn't sustain long term. I want to teach you what works for your child. And that's what this is. So again, I'm going to ask you, please like this video, share this one with your friends if they're stuck and they don't know what to do and they're looking for therapist after therapist after therapist or school after school after school and they're scared about sending their kids out in public and they don't know what to do. One consultation with me, I can help you figure out where you can go, what you can do, what makes sense to you so that you can feel good and confident and empowered about your process. Because unless that happens, it's just going to take you two steps forward and three steps back because you're going to you're vulnerable to triggers and they're going to keep coming at you. You're going to keep getting judgment. Remember, they keep going up. As soon as your child starts into that behavior that you don't want to see anymore, your mindset goes back down again, right? You want to keep these things high and high vibe, if, as we say in the woo-woo world. So thanks again for joining me, everybody. I hope this wasn't too much of a lecture. I hope it was just a reminder that um, you are the best facilitator for your child and you can do this. So 
I hope that um, you'll take advantage of my free resources and dig in and start to figure it out for yourself. And if you need help, please visit wavesofcommunication.com. I'll see you next Thursday for more empowering videos. And my mission is to equip and empower as many parents as possible to facilitate the functional spoken language your child needs to share their wisdom with the world. And that's when your whole entire family and the world is going to be happy so they can know what's in your child's brilliant mind and they can share it with everybody. Thanks again. And bye for now.